Hello, everyone. Welcome to our DTools Cloud webinar, The Key Elements of a Winning Proposal. Thank you guys for joining. We're excited to have you. My name is Chanel, and I will be your host. So this topic is dear to my heart because we meet with hundreds of companies each year who share the common goal of wanting to improve the way their proposals look. So today we're going to cover some ideas on how you can make your proposals look more professional and what elements are most impactful, making it easy for clients to choose you. So when a client or a potential client starts looking at electronic system solutions, the clock is already ticking, right? And you have a small window of opportunity to win their business. Um, and most people are already in the decision-making mode, right? Um, they have um, tons of items to check off a long list and other decisions that, you know, they need to make. So um, a quick turnaround on a proposal request is paramount. And delivering a timely professional proposal demonstrates your responsiveness to their needs, which may be a key factor in their decision to, to, to choose you, right? So um, today we're going to talk about how to automate um, compiling all the sections needed that go into a proposal because that process is very time consuming. So we're trying to alleviate some of that work of combining the cover page and the project description and the service contract and the terms and conditions um, and using a proposal software like DTools Cloud to create a proposal template can save a lot of time through automation, allowing for quick turnarounds on proposals. All right. And then the next item that we're going to dive into is why you? You know, we definitely want you to shine a spotlight on, on your brand, you know, focusing on three areas. Um, we would recommend credentials and what makes you different, your brand differentiation and your core values. This is the perfect time to turn up the heat and have a little bit of fun, you know, flex a little bit. Um, maybe you offer interior design consulting um, so they can create the ultimate experience or maybe you provide service to the client after the project is completed, right? There's lots of value in that. And um, we just want to showcase all your attributes, because clients still need to know that they're dealing with a professional that can deliver a unique solution beyond their wildest dreams, right? So we'll touch on our multimedia proposals today and, um, you know, how you can go beyond the printed page by uploading video testimonials or sleek gallery of your previous work. And then we're going to talk about options. People like choices. So we want you to basically allow your clients to design their own system and set the, their price from within the proposal. Um, you know, going back and forth about proposal revisions significantly slows down the sales cycle. And it can be very cumbersome for the client to undergo that sales experience. So we want to speed up decision making by allowing you to present optional locations or systems or products so that they can quickly finalize your contract. All right. And then we're going to definitely cover visual quoting today, right? Um, uh, most people are visual learners, and we're living in the age of visual information. So graphics definitely play a part, um, an important role in the rate at which we process information. Um, and there's research that, that backs that up. So adding a visual component to the proposal um, is one, more appealing, and also allows it to kind of tie, you know, help the client tie it all together um, quickly and, and facilitate um, the decision-making process even further. So we'll dive into that. And then um, 
just in case anyone is currently in the market for a proposal solution, we do have some savings for February. You can sign up for our trial. And when you activate in app, um, you can save an additional 5% on your annual purchases. Thanks to our friends over at Stob. So just enter in the coupon code. Um, typically, annual purchases, you save 10% by default, and then this just tax an extra five on top. So we're excited to share that with you. All right, so let us dive into the software. So um, on the opportunities tab, this is where the process really starts. And we call this a Kanban board. So you can visually manage your sales pipeline. We want to make it easy for the team to just have a glance and see who's working with whom, on what, and what is the next step in the process. And you basically just drag and drop as the deal moves from a lead to the final stage in your process. But I'm going to start a new opportunity with you all today so you can kind of see the organic process and how it works from scratch. So we're going to create a new opportunity. Let's just call this the Enos cabin. I've always wanted a cabin. So thanks, guys, for letting me dream a little bit today. And then we're going to get into selecting the project type. Just going to say retrofit. Now. We're going to talk about shortcuts today, right? And we want to really um, help save time and, and all the different tools that we have in place to facilitate that. And project type is one of them. So in your settings, if you wanted to add equipment and labor to a project type, um, feel free. That way, just by selecting this during the opportunity creation stage, the quote will already pre-populate with the bones of what you might need for that project type. So we're, we're, in, we're in the thick of it already. Um, I'm going to put my cab in there. And these are the only three required fields. So feel free to just enter that in and breeze through this stage. But if you do take time to, you know, populate what we're asking for, it does have some merit throughout the sales process. So we just entered in the site address and then any details. When I think this client might close, um, how much they have to spend, the square footage. We do some really fun things with calculated items and area. So that's always a nice data point. And then maybe we got this lead from a referral. Referral business is the best business, right? So we're going to create this new opportunity. And an opportunity is a place to track all the moving parts that we need to keep organized to help bring this deal home. So I have the details that I just entered, the quotes, the note, perhaps the next step that I'd like to schedule for myself in the sales process, contact and attachments. So again, everything is in one opportunity file. But we're going to go into the quote and we're going to start building out this job. So we have no equipment yet and we land on the overview tab. And here is the project description. So we're going to click on that. Um, so when we talk about proposal and presenting, right? This is an area where you really want to clearly define the needs of the client and your plan to help them achieve their goals. Um, we want to present the scope in a way that is concise, it is easy to read, and most importantly, again, it's easy to understand. So, you know, as opposed to some of that mumbo jumbo or techie verbiage that they might get from other um, contractors. You want to make it super comprehensive. And creating a global project description is super important because it's a way that you can use the scope repeatedly. Um, and this feeds into your proposal template. So we would recommend building out a global project description, right? Just create little snippets of every solution or service that you provide. And then that way, it's, it's 
something that you can edit each time by removing the parts that don't apply and maybe tweaking it here and there, but it's much faster and much easier than creating new scopes each time. So definitely um, build out your project description templates and it's, 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 it's quick. And you also get that one man, one sound vibe, right? Everyone that's presenting um, has the same look and feel when they get a proposal from your company. All right. So let us start quoting our solution. We're going to go over to design. And there's three different ways that you can approach the quoting process. So we want you to start thinking about, first and foremost, how do you like to work? Right. A lot of integrators that we speak with dread those office days when you have to you're stuck behind a desk and it's, you know, quote after quote. So have a little fun by choosing the style that that you enjoy. Um, some people are very um, Excel minded and like the traditional way of adding new locations and adding product to build your quote. Some people are more visual and prefer to upload a floor plan and then stamp icons on top to build their quote. And then some people um, just prefer to take pictures. I kind of fall in this bucket because it's super easy. Um, you can snap a photo and add equipment on top to create your quote. Um, so, you know, really nice for retrofit projects as well, right? And showing the client what the finished installation will look like. The cool part is no matter what path you choose, they all have the same bill of materials and the output is the same, a proposal. So you can bounce around and have a little fun. We're going to touch on all three today. So I'm going to create a new location, right? We're going to do the main entry and I'm going to keep my, you know, quote, really basic, but you guys work on super complex right um solutions so you do have the ability to do sub locations and things like that um but we're just going to do the kitchen today and since we're talking about automation if there is a default locations list that you'd like to automatically populate just build it out and save it for next time right so in the main entry i can give it a description and i'm going to start adding my products so let's just add a touch screen. Now you're simultaneously searching the DTools library and your catalog. So our hope is to give you a healthy head start on the equipment that you sell, right? So adding the, the grabbing something from our library um, and adding it to a quote simultaneously adds that product to your catalog. So some companies like to, you know, give their team a turnkey experience. <laughs> They're the one percenters um, because setting up software, it takes time, right? So this way you can hit the ground running and build out your catalog um, as you quote. But I'm just going to pick this product, right? And I'm going to add that to my proposal. So now that I've added that, if you have any accessories that you'd like to associate with the parent item, simply add it, right? Um, DTools Cloud is smart. We are going to remember the decisions that you make and try to leverage that for the next time. So the more you use it over time, it really is a custom solution because it's based on your behavior and how we can leverage that moving forward. So accessorize equipment, um, you know, every time it comes with a, a wall mount and wire, just kind of set it up and um, enjoy some automation, right? Um, a lot of clients, you guys are used to software. You have a lot of software. I'm always so surprised at how much, how many different applications our, uh, our users touch. Um, and a lot of them really aren't geared towards the industry that we serve. So this is our 25th year and integrators have helped shape our solution over time. And it really is, is so nice when you're using a product that's made for you. Um, so accessorize your products, 
I'm just going to start adding stuff in here. Um, and as you're working, you can use your keyboard commands to select multiple products and then build a package, right? If there is something that you're quoting a client that you want to use repeatedly, um, build a package, push it out to the catalog and use it next time. So I'm going to click on this product and now you can view the product details. I'm actually going to open this up and talk a little bit about the data. Because there's a lot of time that our users spend managing data and pricing, right? So our hope is that um, you can get some time back with our integrated pricing. So when you build a product, or download it from the DTools library. Manufacturer, model, category. You have some images. This is the thumbnail that's going to represent this product on your proposal. But down at the pricing section, this is where some automation starts to come in, right? We want you to connect to your suppliers. And that's how we know how much you paid for this product, right? And it will stay up to date thanks to our relationship with that supplier. So enjoy some automation here. Um, what we don't know is how much you'd like to sell it for. So if you're importing from an Excel CSV file, of course, we'll have cost and selling price. Um, but if you're not, there's tons of tools to help blanket pricing or set it globally. So the more popular method is actually to map MSRP to unit price. So just as of late, MSRP is actually a managed field by our suppliers. So it's a nice base for a lot of our users and you can map that to your unit price using what we call a brand price rule. Or you can work from the margin as well. Um, but based on the cost and the selling price, we know the profit on each item and that's what allows us to know how profitable you are on the proposal prior to presenting to the customer, right? It's, it's tied and it stems from the data. All right, so that's pricing. And then labor. There are, I'd probably say, three ways that I've kind of identified in my tenure here um, <laughs> on how companies like to manage time or sell time, we can accommodate all those different methods. However, our default method is by tying labor to the equipment, right? So we're going to give you a base. Every product that you download from the DTools library is going to have a suggested installation time. If you agree, fantastic. If you prefer to edit it and tweak it for your team, that's encouraged, right? Um, but there's going to be a placeholder there. Now, there's also additional types of labor that you sell at different rates. So you're able to stack additional types of labor and feed this into the bottom line on this device, this, this, the install price. Right. So I'm going to so I have installation. I have programming. I'm going to add some more labor here. Um, materials management. I'm on like a one woman mission to get um, our users to start adding that. And then you can keep on tacking it in. So this 310 is a part of this installation price. Um, so we love to capture cost. Right, especially when it comes to labor, because it's 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 the quickest way for what we call margin erosion to happen, right? Because it's the only variable. The equipment we know the parameters of. The labor is the wild card, and and um, we want to make sure that we're not leaving um, revenue on on the table. We want to capture that cost and translate it onto the client. And just so you know, this is the internal composition of this device, right? How we show this to the customer is a whole nother story. So we'll, you, can, you can display um, or hide as much of this content as you'd like. But this will allow your, your sales team to move more quickly 
focusing on the parent items um, and not getting too into the weeds, but feeling confident that they're selling the right mix, um, product and labor mix of every product. All right, so and then the library. If our partners provide user guides, cut sheets, PDFs, we, we allow, um, we just capture that and present it to you um, as a resource. Our multimedia proposals, Clients can access this from inside the quote as well. So really nice um, way for them to kind of skill up and learn a little bit more about the quality of the solution that you provide. And then if you want to track specifications, accessories, and all that stuff, um, you can go to town. But that is the root of our solution. So now that we're in a quote, I can make any modifications to that, to this product. And they're only specifically for this client, right? So you have a, a global and a job specific level. All right, so we have our pricing, we have our labor, and now we wanna talk about options. At the beginning, we talked about empowering clients to choose and make um, decisions from inside the proposal. So I'm gonna add what we call an alternate to this product. I'm going to say to the client, choose your preferred touch screen. All right. And then we are going to search. I'll just pick a couple more. Let's do perhaps this one. And I'm only going to give this client two options, right? Um, let's just say this is the most popular. This makes people feel really comfortable. They love to be in the majority. Um, does the trick every time. Okay. And then maybe this is the high-end option, right? This is our best-in-class because perhaps they also want the best. I can automate the upsell and maximize this opportunity by allowing the client to, to upgrade. Or perhaps I wanna offer something that's a little bit more cost effective, right? And I'm just gonna say that this is, this is a, all right. So you can mark the items as optional, um, but I wanna use this recommended button here because there's a lot of value. You know, you guys are the subject matter experts and um, clients to know that you recommend an item is, is super powerful. So I've just created an on the fly alternate set, right? And I have some item validation coming up here. So I'm going to go ahead and address that. So in your settings, you can basically tell the software um, what to flag, right? When cost is zero or price is zero. Again, when we're moving quickly, it's just really nice to see um, where the errors are and make this a grant. I quickly identify the, any issues and, and move on. So once you do that, you'll be, you'll be good. And I have another error that says I'm selling above MSRP, but that's okay. We're in business to make money, so they'll be fine. All right. Um, so that is an alternate set. Um, the other thing that you could do is let's go into the kitchen and maybe they, um, they wanted a, I don't know, some speakers. Or perhaps they didn't ask for any speakers, but I'm going to go ahead and add this to my quote. And I'll do two in the kitchen. They seemed kind of on the fence about it. So I'm going to make the kitchen location optional. So that's going to do a couple things. Everything in that location is also optional. And when I present the proposal, we will, the client will have the option to add that location in. So you can really allow them to just kind of move through and confirm or add in different elements. So you can make 
a product optional, um, or perhaps you want to make a location or again, a system optional. So tons of ways to um, kind of engage. So I'm going to go over to visual and we're going to upload a floor plan and start doing a visual version of this quote. PDF, JPEG, PNG are the file types that we accept. And I am going to zoom to fit and lock down my floor plan. Because believe me, if you have a whole bunch of equipment on top and your floor plan shifts, it's flip table worthy. So lock it down <laughs> and start building. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to identify locations because we don't know which location is which until you tell us. So I'm going to use this draw locations tool in my palette and start defining my locations. This is literally the same thing that we did in list. We're just doing that visually. But because we created these locations already, they're here for us to pull from. So let's just say, I have a covered patio, kitchen, put a, a nice study here, and you can build out your location. Now, there's a double chevron tab off to the side that I could expand. So you kind of, this environment's kind of cool because you can, it's like the best of both worlds. You can add a location here, for example, the garage, and I can see that it's not on the floor plan because I have a perforated square versus a solid square. And then retroactively just come in here and assign that location. So it's really nice um, to, to work. I, well, I like it. Now, I'm going to turn off my borders because I have borders. But if I didn't have a floor plan, you could still create some shapes and give the client a layout of their space and help tie it together um, for them. Now we're going to start adding equipment. So I'm going to add a package. I happen to have an outdoor TV package in my catalog. So I'm going to, the client might want the gold one. And I'm going to click and add that product, that package to the, the floor plan. And I'm prompted for my accessories. Um, these are optional and recommended. So that's why they're pre selected. Um, but depending on how, you like to work, you can have your accessories give a pop-up, or if you prefer not to be alerted, they can be required and fixed and not alert the user when you're adding accessories. But um, now we're talking about speed here. Um, if I had several different mounts, maybe there were five different mounts that I could associate with an outdoor TV, I could have them off, you know, offered up at this stage and then just say, I want that one. So during your onboarding, that's when we would kind of talk about these best practices and kind of how you want the software to support the way that you like to work. All right, so that is the plan view. Now I'm going to go back over to my tab and go into the main entry. And we added this touchscreen in list, but you can also drag and drop from the bill of materials. So some people like to list everything out knowing that they're charging for the right equipment, or some people like to just work here knowing that they are building the proposal as they work. All right, so that's visual. And then what other tools do you have in your arsenal, so to speak? We can click on the product and the detail bar slides out the same way. So you don't lose any functionality by working this way. You actually gain some. So let's add a camera. All right, from our friends over at Claire. I love these. So we're going to add one in the covered patio and perhaps one in the main entry. Okay, so let's see here. What am I going to do? I'm going to turn on my coverage shapes. So this is another sales tool. Um, 
if you want to show the client maybe why you recommend one camera over another, like you got, you guys want to see this much or you want to see this much, right? Um, but again, more visual tools to support your recommended proposal. And also sometimes it's a little, you know, they don't know what's best for them. And this helps them understand why they chose you because you're going to think about it all. So these are great for, of course, camera coverage, Wi-Fi coverage, um, sound dispersion. Um, you could do things, you know, like bring it all together. And it also reads your angle. Like if this camera happened to have a scope of 180, you could have some fun with this and modify the color. So my security happens to be pink. Um, so there's a correlation between the color and the ring around the icon. So again, we're talking about working quickly and identifying what, what products are a part of your security system versus your integrated control versus your AV, right? Um, so that is plan. You can also flip-flop between the icon of a product versus the JPEG image, as well as modify the size. We're going to add some text to this. You can have comments. So um, you can have a conversation, actually, on top of the floor plan with your team, if you'd like. But I'm just going to add some text here. All right, so we added some text, and then you also have access to a pencil and an eraser. So this document could be as internal or as client-facing as you'd like, and we're going to insert this in our proposal that we share with the customer. So this is visual quoting. All right, and the last style is image. So we're going to bump over there. And of course, you'd be taking a photo with your tablet. I'm going to browse out to one on my desktop. And let's just say this is, yeah, I want to take a picture of the front of the cabin. I like this one. And let's just say this is the main entry. And I'm going to now, when I click on the cabin, you can see everything that's the bill of materials for that location, everything that's in that location. Um, if you wanted, you could drag and drop directly from the bill of materials onto the image. You have access to text, pencil, and eraser, and most importantly, the items that you sell, right? So maybe I'm gonna do some lighting. And let's just add a couple of those. Click to add. I'm just going to add one there and one there. And adding it to the proposal adds it to, adding it to the image adds it to the proposal, right? And then the product detail bar comes out the same way. So yeah, business as usual. Um, lock. Okay, cool. Um, it's really also nice when you have an image that has a translucent background. Um, it just really helps in use the product in their space, but a great sales tool, right? Okay, so that is image quoting. Now, before we go to present the proposal to the customer, we're going to take five minutes and make sure that this is a healthy opportunity for the, you know, for the company. Um, and this is really where the rubber meets the road. We're going to go to the pricing summary section and whatever your metrics or goals are, we want to make sure that this proposal supports that. You guys work really hard. So um, let's dig in. I can see that it's 17 grand and six of it is profit. And there's a 38% margin on this, right? The boss might be happy. All is well. Um, we're going to dig in a little bit and just make sure that all is on the up and up. So I like this product versus labor report, and I like to look at it visually um, because this really lets me know, it seems like we're making money because it's a 38% margin, right? But when I look at my product versus labor, 
labor is only 6% of the budget. You know, this is a good indicator that we have grossly underbid how much time this is going to take. I don't know about every market, but we're here in Atlanta and 70-30, that's a healthy ratio of labor to, to product split in the budget. So now we're going to go to the labor tab and dig in a little bit. I can see the different types of labor that have been sold. Um, I could possibly up my difficulty factor. That might help me get a little bit closer, right? Um, let's just say it's 125%, but little tweaks here and there, right? We're not talking sweeping um, changes, but this will just help it make it easy for you to quickly not miss the mark. So, um, and then we can go back to our summary and kind of look again. And just with that little change, yeah, okay, we picked up an extra, you know, percent on labor margin. Um, but you guys get the idea. Um, you can see this by location, by system, by phase. Um, so a lot of ways to slice and dice this data, like the AV system, right? It's only 11 grand, you know, outdoor audio should be highly profitable. Where are we missing the mark? Um, so doing this review really helps make sure that we're covering all our bases. Now you might want to add an adjustment. An adjustment could be a markup or it could be a discount. So you could easily add a friends and family right? You just enter in the name, you can toggle between the percentage and the dollar amount and then save it for future quotes. So again, once you build out what your stock adjustments are, you don't have to modify the bottom line um, moving forward. I happen to have a dynamic adjustment, which a lot of you guys actually enjoy um, or have today. So you can put that process here. Um, my miscellaneous materials or my shop charges, all those things that we buy in high volume um, and low dollar amount, I can say 5% of my product and labor mix is what we charge for our miscellaneous materials, right? And we're just going to add that there. I'm going to actually add another one. Let's just do the friends and family. And this is going to be a flat rate. All right, no, whoa, simmer, not 5,500. And do you want that discount to be applied to the product, the labor, or make them it's gonna take it off the gear? We never wanna discount your time, it's precious. All right, so we have two adjustments, right? And we're about 37% margin, but this is a great area to, um, again, make sure that we're, hitting those notes. All right, so now we're ready to present and we're gonna create our proposal. So the quote is the process of, of adding those items and then the proposal is the client facing piece and what you present. So um, we do have different styles. We're gonna go multimedia because we want all the cool engagement pieces. So I'm gonna create the multimedia proposal and we're gonna start editing it. So the first thing that you do is you start adding sections. You could add a section of text, that's a paragraph, or if you want to add any multimedia sections, that's a gallery. So basically, you add the section, it takes you to it, you give it a name, and you, you insert your text, right? I don't really need that again, so I'm going to delete it. Um, and then you drag and drop by the handles to organize how you want that information to flow. So you have a product section, a labor section, if you wanted to add an executive summary. So tons of different elements for you to choose how you wanna compile your proposal. So I have the cover page here. You can start editing each one and you know what you wanna show, what you wanna hide. Like, you know, I'm showing everything, but you can turn certain elements off. Maybe someone wants the word proposal versus quote. Um, 
easy to make those changes, right? That goes into my philosophy or my mission statement. This is the next couple areas are just kind of showing off all the different ways that you can differentiate your brand. You could upload a MP4 file of a um, a video of a customer testimonial, um, or perhaps the walkthrough that you did with the client. Right? Um, wow, that would be super cool for them just to see that in the document presented back to them. Fun stuff. Um, we have another portfolio. This one's kind of new. This is sleek. You can um, turn on this gallery. Both of these are galleries. You can have more of a slider gallery where the text appears on hover. I mean, we're selling automation, right? So it's cool that they can get a taste of what that means day one. So that's the portfolio. Um, you can also go into the a more static gallery. And if I edit this section, you're basically just browsing out to the image. So if your technician can take five seconds and just capture that beautiful rack or that happy customer, um, this is all great marketing collateral that we can repurpose from inside the proposal. So you basically drag and drop or you browse out to the image, you give it a title. Um, you can hyperlink the image. So if, you know, this can really be an extension of your website. If you want them to click view gallery and have that open up a new tab where they can learn more about the solution, fantastic. Let me get back there. All right. Um, yeah, and you pick your layout and just start adding your your text. And then you can control the button text too. Like if you want something that's actionable, like learn more, view, you know, take a virtual tour. You can actually upload 360 degree images of spaces um, that you've completed. So go there, have fun doing it. Um, again, I have my company profile. So more content um, about why we do what we do. That project description, that, that global template that we alluded to earlier, now it's in here and I can just edit it. Maybe we're not doing this, right? I'm just going to make a quick tweak and save. But we have a lot of content ready to go all the time. I also added another gallery, but I labeled it... Um, images and visual quote attachments. So um, we can now browse the opportunity and the quotes. So if you wanted to insert the floor plan or insert the image with the device placement on top, you could for the client to engage with. All right. Now we're going to go into the locations section, and this is where the bulk of your proposal customization will happen. Um, we're going to edit the location. And now you're, how do you want to organize the equipment? Are we presenting this to the customer by location, or are they more system-minded, right? Um, or maybe it's a combination of both. You can do location by system. So you, you basically just play with the different grouping and display options. Um, let's see, if you presented optional items, do you want them to flow um, within the location or do you want to group them at the end? I like keeping all the items that are optional in one place, but the choice is yours. And you just kind of move through each tab. Now we're really getting into the crux of it, right? Are we showing brand? Are we showing model number? I turn those off. If you add a package, do you want a name and a dollar amount? Or do you want to show the contents of each package? Um, those resources on the product, the user guides, the cut sheets, um, the PDFs, that's a setting in your location. So if you want to um, allow your clients to access that or not, that's the area? Um, are we showing images? So, and it's really nice that you can make little changes and just see the real time um, 
output of what that would mean, like this one price. We're, we're not we're not doing that. We're turning it off, and it's a location subtotal. Um, and accessories. Um, do you want to show? Nah, we don't. The client doesn't need to know that. So I'm going to hide my accessories. Um, the same thing with labor. You want to show labor. Um, and then here, now more options, right? How do you display your negative information? Um, let's get the corporate colors and the branding and really make this, again, look like an extension of your um, website. And after you're done with all your selections, that is what all comes together to create a proposal template. So um, the template is not only um, the skin, but it's also um, what you choose and the composition of what you're presenting. And then you would save, and then you could manage, multi you could have multiple templates, right? Residential versus commercial, one for houses of worship, EDU, um, really nice ways to make your sales presentation super targeted. All right, um, so that's basically the location section. And I'm gonna go into present mode now. So we're gonna exit edit mode and just show you what the client would see. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the location now. So this is where they would click on the thumbnail and get more information. Now, if the client wanted to view that alternate set, I'm not showing pricing, so they don't even know how much they're saving or spending. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to choose the best in class one, right? And then they get a little footer that says you've made a change, resulting in a price difference of an additional 288. And the kitchen is optional, but I'm going to add it. So little areas here and there, they can make their selections and um, choose what they want. They get a summary breakdown. This is also customizable. If you just want the word total and 18 grand, or you'll find the style that you prefer, break that down. The, the payment terms that you've agreed upon. I love a good 80-20. Um, feel free to also just ask for 100%. Um, <laughs> that it seems like, oh, we got to, you know, we're going to order their equipment and then, you know. Um, it's something that our industry does, and I always kind of wonder why we don't just ask for 100%. I mean, I know the projects can get kind of large, but on a, on a dollar amount that's, that's consumable, let's, let's do it. And then your terms and conditions, right? This is where you can um, insert your legal jar jargon, and it really makes... Um, you know, there's a level of professionalism when a client is reviewing your proposal and there is a terms and conditions section. All right. Um, and then your licenses, if you want to add some more fluff, you know, testimonials, awards, social it up. Um, but this is my winning proposal. And then the client can easily accept and sign. Um, now, proposal acceptance is another area um, where you can close business more quickly, right? Um, are you easy to do business with? Um, allowing for e-signatures is one of those things where if you offer it, um, nobody will notice because it's expected. Um, however, if it's hard to choose you and um, deposit funds, that's a red flag, right? So um, we do facilitate that um, process as well. So the client would have accepted and signed your proposal. All right. Now, the present is if you're going to be presenting in the field and handing them your iPad to like, you know, commit to the initial deposit. Um, if the deal is not going to get closed that way, then I would share this proposal with the client. I would pop their email address in. There's a subject. Um, we could make it valid if you'd like. Um, sometimes if they take too long to decide, 
your pricing, your cost has changed at that point, right? So having a validation date um, is going to be nice because if you're quoting something that's on sale, um, when that sale ends, that was the time frame that you had to decide. <laughs> so feel free to use that. And then you could automate up to two email reminders, right? Clients, they want it. They're just busy and overwhelmed by life. So you can subtly represent your proposal in their inbox maybe three days and one day before it expires um, to kind of nudge them towards proposal acceptance, right? And then we would send the proposal. All right. Well, that concludes our webinar today. We covered quite a bit as a recap. We talked about the many ways that we can help speed up proposal turnover, differentiate your brand, empower clients to essentially build their own systems from within the proposal, and how visual documentation can speed up the rate at which your client processes information. We hope this gives you some ideas on how to make your proposal presentations more impactful. Thank you.